So actually this is poorly phrased. Uh, what I should be asking you is which of these best describes the X component of the total force acting on Q due to these three charges? So you're finding the net force on the central charge due to these other three charges using superposition. And you're asked which of these best describes the net component of that force. So this is 2Q, these two are equal charges, all the charges around are positive, the central charge is positive. Remember my, um, my scheme with these is to have red charges be positive and blue charges be negative. Okay, so um, some of you thought that it would be greater than zero, and a f very few of you that it's less, but most of you thought it's equal to zero. So can anyone tell me why the bulk of you chose the middle option? So uh, because these two are equal charges, the force that Q3 exerts on capital Q would go in this direction. The force that Q2 exerts on capital Q would go in this direction. Because of the symmetry, these angles would be equal, right? So if I were to extend this line, these angles are going to be equal. So if I take those two vectors, they have equal length. These angles are equal. That means if I divide them into two components, x and y, the y components will add and the x components will cancel. They'll be exactly equal and opposite because of the symmetry here. So even without doing a calculation, you can tell that there will be no x component because, of course, the third vector due to charge 2q, which way would that point? The force due to the top charge downwards. OK, now can anyone tell me um, whether it would be longer or shorter. So the next question would have been, okay, let me just draw it for now. So this is just to say these two are going to cancel. These are all in the y direction. So of course, the net force is going to be Now what happens when um, I want to calculate the y component of these forces, okay? What about the y component of the total force? Will it be, you know, you can see that there'll be two forces from these two charges pointing up and one from charge Q, two, uh, the 2Q charge pointing down. So which will win? Yeah. Yes. So it will be net force downwards. Okay. And why is that? If you compare the uh, magnitudes, okay, each of those in magnitude. Right, because these are all equidistant from the center. So if I were to compare the magnitudes, you would have F1 is K times capital Q times 2Q over, let's say, the radius squared. F2 would be K times capital Q times 1Q over the same radius squared. And that's equal to F3. So if I compare these magnitudes, you see F1 is 2 times F2 and F3. Correct? So if I were adding F2 and F3, I would get F1. But I'm not adding F2 and F3. I'm adding a component of F2 and F3. Any component... Are you okay? <laughs> that was dramatic. Um, any component of F2 and F3 is going to be smaller than F2 and F3. 
So even though the magnet, because the magnitudes are equal, the y components of these are going to be less than the magnitudes. The side of any triangle is smaller than the hypotenuse. So both of these, if I add them up, are going to add up to a value that's less than F1. So as you said, the net force is going to be downwards because the way I've drawn it here, this vector is going to be longer. Okay, so this angle is theta, right? So Fy, F1y is going to be F1 sine of theta. Sorry, I should make it this angle theta. So it's going to be F1 sine of that angle theta, correct? F1 is half of, it should be F1, sorry, F, let me F2, which is also equal to F3 sine theta. But F2, which is F3, is F1 over 2. So when I do F2 plus F2 sine theta plus F3 sine theta, I'm going to get F1 over 2 sine theta plus F1 over 2 sine theta or 2 F1 over 2, oops, which is equal to F1 sine theta. For any angle theta that's not 90 degrees, that's going to be less than F1, right? Because sine theta, the maximum value is 1 for 90 degrees. So it will always be, this is always less than F1. So you will have that the net Y component is less than 0 because what you will have is F1 Y is negative, F2 Y plus F3 Y is positive but less than F1. So the negative value would win. Now if I had to do this problem again without the central charge, I would be asking you, so I could have done this problem. Let me create a new slide. Suppose I did this asking you what, not giving you a charge at the center. So once again, I take this circle. I have one charge here, two charges on either side. You could do exactly the same problem and ask what is the electric field at the center. And none of what we did would change because having charge plus Q at the center, we were really finding the forces on a positive charge. And the forces were being multiplied by that positive charge. So the only thing that would change would be in these expressions, what I would write is, let me call this Q1, Q2, Q3. If I were doing electric fields, I'd say E1 goes in this direction. E2 goes in this direction, E3 goes in this direction, where E1 is KQ1 over A squared, if A is the radius, E2, not vector but magnitude, K Q2 over A squared, E3 is K Q3, Q3 over A squared. Okay? So the only thing that would be different would be I wouldn't be putting in a capital Q. So I could ca calculate the total electric field this way and at the end multiply it by cal capital Q. So the force on capital Q then would be capital Q times the total electric field due to the other three charges. 
So really, when you're calculating net electric field using superposition due to a bunch of charges, so this is already getting to what I was going to do today in class, you're, you're saying the electric field is really just the force on a charge of magnitude 1, plus 1. Okay, so you're, as the, uh, when you're asked to find the electric field at a point, you can imagine putting a plus 1 charge there and calculating the net force on it. 